everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to do a video about um, completing forms. I wanted to give you eight tips on how to complete immigration forms. Um, when you complete an immigration application, um, there is always a set of forms to be completed. The forms, they change all the time. Um, they can be found online on the IRCC website. Um, and sometimes they can be quite confusing, they can be unclear, uh, and it's important to complete the forms uh, in a proper manner because if you don't do that, then there's a lot of chances that your application might get refused or sent back or um, you can get a lot of uh, delays and complications. Um, so here are my eight tips. So the first tip is uh, make sure that you uh, complete the latest and most updated version of the form. So sometimes what can happen is you can decide you're going to apply for an application, for example, a visitor visa, and you download the document checklist, you print it and you print all the forms and you start working on it and you work on it for a couple of weeks or sometimes even, let's say something happened, you put it on pause and then you come back to it like two, in two months and you decide to finalize the form and you sign the forms and you submit it. Don't do that. What's best to do is when you're ready, you know that in about a few days or maximum a week or two, you're going to file your application. Then upload, download and print the most the latest version of the form that's online um, because the form they do change all the time for all the applications sometimes forms don't change but I find that's rare there are certain types of files where there is a couple of forms that I haven't changed let's say since 2012 but even those sometimes you'll you might notice at the bottom it says 2012 but then if you compare that version with another version kind of looks different so and immigration can be a little bit picky about that so I would always recommend that you download and print the latest version when you, you are close to submitting your application. This is what we do our, at our office. Let's say a client retains us. We always ask for the supporting documents first and that could take, let's say, a couple of weeks for the client to provide it to us and we start working on the file. And then it's at the end that we send the forms to the client uh, so we can get the information because the forms, they do change. Tip number two, um, type instead of handwrite. So yes, you could handwrite the forms. Immigration usually accepts that. But if it's possible for you, it's recommended that you type. It just just nicer and cleaner. It's going to make the officer's job a little bit easier to process and analyze your information. Um, sometimes people have, certain people have very, very difficult handwriting. Um, so you don't want your information to get confused uh, because you decided to, to handwrite. Uh, you, when you type, there's a certain organization that takes place. So I always recommend that you type the forms. Uh, tip number three, complete all the sections. So. That's super important. It sounds pretty simple, but it's kind of easy sometimes to forget to include entire sections. Often what you'll see in some immigration applications is that there are certain sections that might not apply to you. For example, it says children's information or um, are you in any kind of organization or um, uh, any political affiliation or something like that. I What we do at the office is we always write none or not applicable. We never leave any section blank, just it's an exercise for us to make sure that we've completed everything and I would recommend you do the same thing if you're filing yourself. Go through every section and make sure you give an answer for everything and if it doesn't apply to you then you write N slash A non applicable or no, uh, this does not apply to me. Um, it'll, it, you're just going to make sure that you keep complete everything. Uh, tip number four, four, sign at the right place. Uh, again, it sounds simple, but there's a lot of people, or a lot of, sometimes our clients, we give them very specific instructions, but they will sign at the wrong line, the wrong place. Often at, at, the, at the end of an immigration form, there's two sections, one that says sign here and date, and at the end it says if this form has been translated to you, you need to sign and the translator needs to sign. Sometimes our clients will sign there, then we have to ask them, no, if this form, if this form wasn't translated to you, in this case it's not, you need to sign you know, up up of that, not where it says translations, uh, translator's signature, um, something like that. So very important to read carefully where to sign. And also, are you signing or is the sponsor signing? So very important to read co-signer, applicant, sponsor, um, so that you sign at the right uh, spot. That's something that's extremely important. And 
immigration will return an entire application if you've signed at the wrong spot or if you've missed to sign one, uh, one form. Uh, tip number five, the document checklist. So most applications have a document, all applications have a document checklist that says all the, the documents that you need to provide. So make sure you include the document checklist in your application and make sure you tick off every single line. And if it doesn't apply to you, for example, you don't have to provide police clearances or you don't have dependents uh, or you don't have to provide a medical examination or something like that, make sure you put N slash A non-applicable or write non-applicable. If there is something that for example, in our files, sometimes for humanitarian applications, we don't submit police clearances from the beginning because we know that for this type of file, it's not necessary. Um, so we always write on the document checklist will be provided later. Um, so we make sure to write that. Um, but in your case, if you're applying yourself, um, we always always make sure you, you go line by line and you make sure that you tick off every single box so that you don't forget anything uh, important. Um, tip number six, no gaps in history. This is super important. Um, there are often questions, where have you lived in the last 10 years? Uh, what activities have you done in the last 10 years or since you're 18? That has to be if, you, you know, if you're studying, if you're on vacation, if you're a student, if you're unemployed. You can't leave any gaps, so you can't even have one month where there's no information. So let's say you were a student for a long time and then you had a summer off, then you worked for a little bit part-time, then you were unemployed, then you worked, then you became a student again, and then you were unemployed again. You need to write every single gap, every single um, section timeline has to be what you did, what was the activity. Uh, on the forms, there's usually four or five lines it's it's usually often it's not enough it might be but for a lot of our clients what we do is we ask them to or we prepare for them an additional sheet a word document that we say continuation of the form and sometimes it's 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 long it's like another 10 lines or another 20 lines of because some of our clients they've traveled a lot or they've had multiple part-time jobs so we always tell them do not leave any gaps and we double check to make sure from it's if it's from 2017 january to 2017 December let's say that was one activity then after that it has to be January 2018 until and then we we make sure there's absolutely no gap so that's very very important um, immigration will return applications because there's one month missing um, tip number seven keep a copy for your record so once you've completed all the forms ideally you've typed them I would suggest you uh, save uh, as attachments on your computer on a hard drive. Sometimes because Adobe or programs they change or the forms like weird things happen you might not be able to open it again. What I would suggest you do is you print your the forms that um, once you completed your forms before you send your application photocopy them or scan them rather than attachments because then if it's impossible to open, at least you have a scanned copy. Uh, for example, if immigration loses the application or they ask you for some further information years down the line uh, and you want to double check what you did, if you decided halfway through or after you want to hire a lawyer, you didn't. It's, it's good if you have a copy of what you submitted because you can refer to it, you can send it to your new representative and then we have access to the information right away. Tip number eight, uh, be, an be honest when answering questions. So that's also super important. There's sometimes there's very, very specific, there are specific questions. Have you been refused before? Have you been detained before? Sometimes it's quite specific. Have you been refused a visitor visa to Canada or any other country? Have you been charged or detained, you know, charged or, det or convicted, for example? So if you've been charged, even if it was dismissed or withdrawn or dropped, but you were charged of something, a petty theft or something very, very minor, you need to you need to say yes, and then you need to explain. So always answer the forms in a truthful manner, because down the line, it's just going to make everything simpler for you to just be very honest in your in your forms and in your documentation. Thank you, and see you next time.